Okay, still the 9th of January 2022. Kate Middleton's birthday, my daughter's birthday was yesterday and they were born within hours of each other and shared a room following their births. And I know that because I remember it. And uh, my Georgia had a quiet birthday yesterday because it's COVID conditions. Although they've all been party animals, everybody's sort of getting older and t there aren't so many venues you can go to, like. So, let's put the clobber on a lot of things. Anyway, I just walked through the fort area. I did a video just um, reflecting on my feelings about the clearing and the chopping of the down of the trees possibly I'm not going on about that because it's all in that other video I explored this path now with little brandy possibly about oh let me see eight. I'm, I'm trying to think 15 16 years ago 15 years ago. Is it that long ago? No, it can't be that long ago. Um, eight. No, 11 or 12 years ago. As me and Brandy started exploring these, these pathways. This lower one is still quite a quiet one. And it, it is undulating, so I do have some little steep bits. Now at the moment it's quite dry, but it would be very muddy in places where the water collects. Little areas just like here, look, on this corner. I haven't seen any bike tracks, because I have known those mountain bikers to use some of these tracks. It's probably about a year or so since I've done it in this order, this way. I might have done it in the summer, coming this way. I might have done last year. It's possible I did. I don't know without looking in my video book. I keep a little log of every video I do. In fact, I've just been in Wilkinson's just before the walk to buy Maggie some dog treats and to buy some discs to record my walks, which are saved in different clouds as well. But I like to keep a disc because, for example, somebody said to me a year or so ago, have you got any videos of the wood? That so I shared a lot of my videos. I had them on disc. Um, some had been shared to YouTube or Facebook, but not that many at the time. I've got videos of me and Brandy up here in the snow, thick snow. This is more like spring, the weather we're having. Very, very challenging. Uh, no, I wouldn't say challenging at the moment, very unsettled weather. You have one day of brilliant sunshine but still very windy all the time. And you have a day. There's a way out there, by the way, if you want to go on the track. The main track going up goes up there. Then you'll get another day. Where it's, like today, a bit of blue sky. But, oh, and, le and less wind. And then, then a cloud over. We've also had an awful lot of grey, grey. Um, yeah, it's not been very good. This this has started. Really, it's come on. I think it's accelerated the changes in the past two years. Especially this past year. I think it has. That's my personal feeling. By watching the weather going out a lot. I go, I'm a walker.
Today I'm actually doing a lot of tree work on the internet. My tree is big, I've got so much to do. I need another lifetime to do it so much. It's coming in thick and fast, I can't keep up with it. Um, I'm at the moment, I've just decided I've done quite a lot on my children's side on their dad's side. Just recently I've done a lot for them. I'm uh, now doing, I'm looking at my great grandmother. I call her my gatekeeper. I really do. And of course the 1921 census is out at the moment on Find My Pass, but it'll be better presented when Ancestry get it. When Ancestry Com get it, they present stuff much better. So although I might pay for a few viewings with Find My Past, um, I will wait. Like I did with the 1939 census when they got it first, but eventually Ancestry got it. Um, so I, I like how Ancestry... Well, I did like... It's changed hands, apparently. It's becoming like real business now, so business people are getting involved. It does change it slightly. And they have made some changes. I, I'm not quite sure if I like them or not. Um, at the moment. So, they've changed the style of presentation quite a lot over the past 15 years as well. But Zara said to me that uh, she thinks they've changed hands. And I think they have because the presentation looks a bit different. I liked Ancestry's method. I did like how they do things. And I don't want them messing around with my tree. That's why I keep a lot of paperwork. Physical paperwork in folders. You know what I mean? Everything goes on the big database though. There's loads more on the big database because I... I can't afford to print everything out and I'd have hundreds of folders, thousands of folders by now. I have to be very selective what I get. It's usually um, important records. Um, hatching, matching and dispatching. Birth, marriage and death. Um, mainly that actually. Parish records, censuses, any important other documents, military. Um, lots of, there's lots of little things, directories, electoral rolls, and then looking at general history as well, around, people could turn up in history. So, and I, 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 I share stories, I do PDFs, um, if I find something really good online, I share it straight to the database, because um, sometimes it can be pages long, I can't reprint everything out, you know what I mean? So there's a wealth of material on my tree, a wealth. I mean, for example, if I find somebody new, I always look up all about the village they come from. Because a lot of it is small communities with the rural people. Uh, and as we know, many people didn't move around a great deal at one stage. They were controlled by Lord of the Manor, they had to get permission. So the records were quite reliable and regular. Then you got the Industrial Revolution and loads of people moved, thinking they could make their fortune by moving to the cities. Towns like, well, you know, cities, Manchester exploded with its mills and its industry. Birmingham. Depleting sometimes the little villages because everybody left. I've got quite a few of my associated family to Marianne Oak Brooks who moved all over the place and all over the world. Right, get up this here. This is where I tend to slip and that. Anyway, what I was saying was I'm doing a bit, oh, at the moment, I'm on a great aunt of mine. In fact, she's a great, great aunt. Alice Elizabeth 
Brooks, her name is. She's about five years younger than my great aunt, my great grandmother. It's her sister. They all often worked in domestic service, which was common in those days, even though we've got a rich background. Mary Ann Oak Brooks, for example, went off to London and worked in service for a while. So she met my great grandfather, Louis, and her sister did for a short while as well. Some of the women didn't get married till later because they had to go into service and they couldn't, it wasn't always easy to find a bloke, I suppose. Anyway, there's an intriguing story that's got me at the moment. I know I've covered it before, somewhere. I know I must have looked at it. She married into the Kipling family. Charles, oh Charles, I can't remember a second name, but Charles Kipling. He's got a, Charles Hawkins Kipling, that's right. He, um, and then his father, they were silk manufacturers. They did silk parasols, employing lots of people. And he became a commercial traveler in the silk trade. Anyway, examining the censuses and the burials, I found that Charles had, um, was buried with his mother up in, I can't remember the name of the cemetery at the moment, but West Norwood Cemetery. Yes, he's up there. They've got a big stone upright plinth with some sort of angel on the top. Now, he died quite young, but in one of the censuses, could be 91 or it could be 81 as well, he was actually living with his mother. She was like his carer because somehow he became paralysed. Now it could be that my great great aunt couldn't cope with him or something happened, I don't know what yet, and that's what I'm going to try and find out. How did he become paralysed? Did Was it through disease? Did he fall? He was a traveller, a wealthy traveller. Because he is still in the census, but he died in 1918. I can't remember the exact date, but he, he died anyway before she did. I couldn't see an image of her on the plinth, but they never didn't show it all round. So that's a little story I'm looking at at the moment. She died in 1912. I will get her death certificate. I need to get Marianne Oak Brooks' death certificate for some reason I haven't got it. Or if I'm going to check a folder where I keep the paper ones, I haven't put it online. I need to find an order one. I really need to. Anyway, I've got one for Barbara Fletcher actually. I encountered her. her one of her great-grandmothers, I need to find her death certificate because she died and he married very, well, she was still warm in the grave. And then they emigrated and he, he moved his name around, slightly altered it. Same bloke though, and they, they moved to Canada. So yeah, there's lots of little stories because there's this is this is people, and that's what inf intrigues me also about doing family tree. It's not just looking for dates, figures. It's trying to uh, realise they were people, sentient beings with feelings who laughed, cried, who were nasty, were, who were kind. Yeah, there's lots and lots. This is sometimes I just go off on a, tr a thread like this, and I mean, it just intrigues me how he got paralyzed. And I think I'll have to get his death certificate as well. 
so he's not a direct... They did have a child though, Francis. Francis Ruby Kipling. There was a child, so that is a cousin, that is a relative, and she had children. And I have got all the link to that. Which way do I go here, Sheila? Carry on down, okay. Can go up that way if you want. No, carry on. So what I'm saying, why I find it so fascinating, and I didn't really want to pull myself away from it, but I knew my lungs needed exercise. Because when I had, if I had a couple of days in, what I call in, I might just go up the shop or go for a walk with Zara and Maggie. I get the stale air syndrome. And it interferes with me breathing. So I know I've got to do at least one big ill, which I've done. But of course, I didn't really want to be taken away from the tree. I do have switch off points though, because uh, I get to a stage in the evenings now where I can't concentrate enough, I'm, I'm feeling tired and I don't want to make any errors. So I tend to sit in the chair now and watch TV, tell you the truth, I'm a bit boring really. Whereas years ago when I first got into Ancestry, right, I'd be on it two, three o'clock in the morning, just couldn't get away. I still got that passion, but I'm getting older. So I find it more difficult to actually maintain the concentration and the alertness. And if you don't maintain those, it's time to switch off and have a break. So make sure you feed yourself. Otherwise, that's where you, you take risks and assumptions. And you cannot do that. I mean, I've had to correct myself. Everyone does. Everybody sometimes goes up the wrong tree, if you like. And you have to correct yourself fast. Because you can soon 